which, as I already said, was Mary Ann Burroughs, A-C-S-A-L-B. And she's presenting from the Company Communicator Manual Project Number 10 called Inspire Your Audience the second time around. She's already been through this. She's already got her CC, CC but you can go through it again if you choose to, and that's what she's chosen to do. And her, uh, again, this project is Inspire Your Audience. The purpose of the speech is to inspire the audience to improve personally, emotionally, professionally, or spiritually, relying heavily on emotional appeal. The speech should appeal to noble motives and challenges the audience to achieve a higher level of belief or achievement. And the speech is to be at 8 to 10 minutes. And the name of this speech is Joy. Help me welcome Marianne to the lecture. Hello, Toastmasters, and welcome guests. Joy. Where is your joy level? Is it up here? Is it here? Is it down here somewhere? Well, maybe a better question to ask is, where would you like your joy level to be? Down here, here, or up here? One of the first things we need to do in regard to putting our joy level up is to recognize what does joy mean to me, or to you, or to you? Because if you're not even sure of the definition of what joy is to you, you're going to bypass moments of joy as you're running through life trying to get things done and accomplish things. So it's not a bad idea to take out a piece of paper and a pen and begin to make a list of things that really make you joyful. Take a few minutes out of your day. Was it spending time with your grandchildren? Maybe it was walking in the park or being with friends. Really hone in on the things that make you joyful. Now, one of the things that you can do whenever you're down is to, again, take out your paper and pencil and begin to write down all the things you're truly and honestly grateful for. And I want you to include things like a flush toilet, toilet paper. <laughs> if you've ever been to a country where they don't have those, believe me, those are things that we should be appreciative of. And how much time do we spend in our life chasing after that 5% of our life that's not working right. And we, we just go about and beyond the things that are working well in our life. So we really need to start to become aware of the things that we are appreciative so that we can draw them back into our life in a, in a more solid way. Next technique I'm going to share with you is called um, reframing. How many of you have ever gotten a picture, gone to the store, got a mat, and then a frame for it? Anyone? Okay, a couple of you. If you've ever done that, it's really quite an interesting experience because depending on what you put in the background of that picture, it can make that picture look bright and cheerful or subdued or blend in with the background. And let me show you an example. I take this picture and put it behind a purple background, it kind of gets faded. But if I take that same picture and put it behind a yellow, see how it looks very different. Same picture though. Or find a back black background, a totally different feel and look. So if we take a scenario in our life, let's say it's I just lost my job. And we reframe, if we frame it in, oh my gosh, I lost my job, my boss is an idiot, how dare they do this to me? And on and on that storyline goes. But if I take that same picture and put it in a different frame and think, wow. I guess the universe doesn't want me in that job anymore. I wonder what the future has to hold. Same picture, same situation, just a very different way to frame it. Can anybody think of anything in their lives that's not working quite the way you want that you might be able to reframe for us? Well, all right, I'll just give another example then. My brother's in the hospital, and for a number of days, I was feeling very down, and you know, oh my gosh, this is awful, what are we gonna do? So as I was preparing for this speech and I was thinking about it, I thought, well, I better put this into play myself if I'm going to share this. So today I was thinking, well, the best thing I can do is just be there for him and do all the things that I can do for him. And that just takes the energy in just a slightly different way. I remember this one day, it was a really, really bad day. One of those that you wish you'd never have to repeat. 
I happened to go upstairs and I began to work on my computer. <clears throat> I happened to look out the window and for one moment I saw this bird preening its wings in the, in the sunlight. And I really got totally engrossed in that picture. And I was amazed that when I kind of woke up from that, that that heaviness of my day was still there, but I was really taken by the fact that in that moment I could see a ray of light even the, in the midst of a very challenging day. So sometimes it's just the way we refocus things. Most of you have probably seen this picture before. It's a picture that's superimposed by a young woman and an old hag. Can everybody see both of them? You can. The woman, beautiful woman, this is her port or her side, and this is a necklace and a fur coat and plume in her hair. Or if it's an old woman, it's the chin is here and the nose and the bush. But we can only see one or the other. So in our lives, if we begin to choose to focus on what's working in our life, we'll begin to see that more frequently. It's always our choice. Another thing you can do is smile. You might say, smile, I'm having a terrible day. My life is falling apart around me. But do you know that scientists are beginning to find that this simple configuration of a smile on your face can actually begin to change the chemistry in your body. It can bring down your pain levels, can bring down your blood pressure, and heighten your mood. And think of it, we spend millions of dollars for hair care products, cosmetics, and clothing to make ourselves look more beautiful. And a smile doesn't cost anything. It can make more beauty on you than all those things put together. This time I'd like to share a short story with you. It's called The Law of the Garbage Truck. A fellow got in a taxi and they're driving along when suddenly a black car came barreling into the, almost into the taxi and almost hit them. The taxi driver smashed on his brakes and just missed them by about half an inch. Then the man in the black car turned around and started yelling and screaming and doing hand motions to the taxi driver. The taxi driver took a deep breath, smiled, waved and drove on by. The fellow in the back seat was perplexed and said, hey buddy, I, I don't get it. That guy almost killed both of us and smashed up your taxi. And you smiled and waved. And, and I could tell it was a genuine smile and a wave. It wasn't artificial. The taxi driver said, I call it the law of the garbage truck. He said, most people walk around in their life just building up this garbage of anger, frustration, irritation, and hatred. And they're just waiting for someone to dump their garbage on them. He said, I realized I had a choice. I could either pick up that garbage and carry it with me and then dump it on somebody else, or I could just leave it there. I realized life is just too short, so I just bless those people and drive on by. So fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests, I hope I've given you a couple of tools and techniques and ways to rise your bar on your joy level so that you can live a more enjoyable, peaceful life. <clears throat>